By the end of this video, you'll have made this very simple menu system. Hi there, thank you for joining me. My name is Drew, and this is a Retro Cemetery tutorial for Game Maker Studio 2.3. We are going to use, and actually this works for 1.4 and 2 as well, so don't worry about that. This is going to be a menu tutorial that is painfully simple, because there's a lot of menus out there that show you either how to use like the mouse, and you just hover over a button and you click on it, and then it goes to the next room or something, and that's cool, but sometimes you want to use a keyboard or a controller. On the other hand, you've got some that show you how to use for loops and arrays and all these other crazy things that are wonderfully thorough, but also kind of confusing for newer users. So I developed this when I was just a little baby new game dev, and all that stuff baffled me wildly. And it's really effective, and it can work for almost anything. So don't use it for like role playing games or strategy games where you would need a lot of menu systems, but just for an arcade game where you just need to get started and maybe have some options or something. This is great, and it's really simple, and it's going to be awesome for new devs. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Let's create a sprite. I'm going to call this S underscore menu. And I'm going to change the size so that it's big enough to give me some elbow room. Edit image. I'm going to make the background blue just so we can see what we're doing. I like that blue a little better. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to choose the white button or the uh, white color and I'm going to hit T or you can select it from over here. I'm going to start some text. And say start menu and exit. Now if you're uh, words look really blurry and awful. That's probably because you have anti-aliasing on. That doesn't look great. I don't like the way that looks. So make sure anti-alias is off. Start menu exit. Unless you like the way it looks. It's up to you. I'm just trying to show you how I do this. From here you can either just click off to the side or you can hit escape and ask you if you want to commit tool changes. If you say yes, it stays. If you say no, it goes away. So pretty simple stuff. Go up here and hit control C V V control V twice so that you copy and paste these three frames. Mac users, I apologize. I don't know your shortcuts because I don't have a Mac. You can also right click and say copy and paste up here. Now we've got three frames that are identical. We need to show which one is being selected. So let's choose you hit the S key on your keyboard or choose the rectangle select tool. And we're going to highlight the bottom two words and choose a gray color, not the darkest gray, because if you're on a black background, that one's hard to see. And then I'm going to hit either V or you select the color replace tool. And I'm just going to dye these bottom two dark gray. And I'm going to go to the next frame and I'm going to select start button and I'm going to hold control and highlight exit. And I hit V and then I'm going to replace those colors. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the first two buttons. All right. Then I'm going to delete the bottom layer. I want to make this stand out a little bit more. I want to make it look like it's glowing because I think that's a cool effect. So I'm going to say duplicate layers. I do this all the time, by the way. I use this for fire, for bullets, for menus. I use this effect all the time. Select the bottom layer and go up to effects and select blur. I'm just going to bump this up to about four and apply to all frames and just the select layer. Apply. And now it looks like your button kind of glows, which is a nice look. Image, auto trim all frames, and now it's just the size that I want it to be. Perfect. Let's go ahead and create an object and say this is O underscore menu. Assign the sprite that you just made and start the create event. It's like image speed equals zero. That's very important. Then we're going to go to the step event and we're going to create some local variables. Now these variables are different from standard variables or global variables because they can only be used in this block of code, only in the step event. Can't use it in the create event, can't use it in other objects. And we only want to use it here, so that's good. We don't want to give that control to anything else. So we're going to say var up down, accept, and back. Here we're going to say up, down, accept, and back. And here's a little cheat. Hold down the Alt key and highlight off to the right and drag your mouse down. 
So now you can write in this whole field. So we're going to say equals keyboard check pressed. And we're going to open some parentheses. And then we're going to say or gamepad button check pressed. Parentheses zero, um, comma, GP underscore. And then I'm going to do close parentheses and semicolon. Let's go fill this in. This is going to be VK up. This one's going to be VK down. You know, I just realized that you guys might have trouble seeing this if you're working on a smaller screen. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that you guys can see, you guys and girls can see exactly what's going on. That one also image speed. I apologize, I should have done that earlier and it just dawned on me that you guys might be watching this on your phone or something and this helps a lot. So, we've got up, down, accept, and back. We're gonna use keyboard check pressed, which means only when you press a key, not when you're holding it down and not when you release it because those are different functions. This is just when you tap this button. VK up, so that's gonna be your up directional key on the virtual keyboard. Or gamepad button check pressed GP, which is gamepad pad U, which is the directional pad and then up. And we've got down is gonna be keyboard check pressed VK down or gamepad button check pressed zero GP pad D. This is going to be, I'm gonna use F and D for accept and back because your hands are probably on the ASDF keys. So we're gonna say ORD, open parentheses, open quote, capital F, close quote, close parentheses. When you're doing letters, you have to put ORD, parentheses, uh, parentheses quotes, uppercase, and then close it out that way. Or GP face one, which is the A button on an Xbox controller. This is going to be ORD, quotes D, close parentheses, and this is going to be face two. Now, if you're having trouble with any of this stuff, just remember that you can middle click on anything in Game Maker, and if it has, if it's like a function or something, it will bring up the menu and tell you exactly what it is. And that's just fantastic. Especially with like the face buttons, when you're getting into the Xbox controller, it's got this mildly confusing upside down illustration of an Xbox controller, but it is upside down so that you can see the shoulder and uh, bumper buttons, trigger and bumpers, or however you want to call them. And there you go. So this is your pad up, down, left, right, face one, face two, face three, face four, and so on. You can study this on your own time. I want to make this as breezy as possible for the menu tutorial, but definitely come back here and check it out once you get into controllers. All right, so now we've got how to move up and down and accept and go back. Now we need to say if up and image index, actually I'll show you how to do this first. If up, image index minus minus. Then if down, image index plus plus. You could also say minus equals one, but minus minus and plus plus is the same thing as saying plus equals one. This means it's going to go down one and up one. Now, why is that? Well, that is because we've got three frames here, starting at zero, and then frame one and frame two. And so we're saying you should, remember we're saying no image speed, so it's not animated at all. And then pressing up, pressing down advances you further into the animation. And then pressing up goes backwards in the animation. Simple as that. Now this will cycle through that. So if you keep pressing up, you can go up and then it starts over at the bottom. So let's go into a room and I'm going to make this room a little smaller. I create viewports, enable viewports and clear viewport background. Very important. I'm going to make the viewport visible. I need to change the camera properties and the viewport properties. It's going to be a room that's 360 by 180, and I'm going to change the properties to 720 by 360, which is double that size. Let's go ahead and bring the menu in and just put it dead center. Play. 
So now we've got our menu here. And you can press down to go down through the menu and up to go up through the menu. And it cycles through. Very simple, very cool. But sometimes you don't want it to cycle through, so we're just going to put a little condition in here. If up and image index is greater than zero. And if down and image index is less than two, because we have three frames and it starts counting at zero, so zero, one, two. So it's saying for up to do anything, the image index has to be above zero. And for down to do anything, it needs to be above, it means it needs to be less than two. So now up doesn't do anything if you're in the top. Actually, it's not doing anything at all. Oh, wait. This needs to be greater than zero. My apologies. I had that backwards. How silly. And the, this needs to be less than two. So now you can go down and you can go up and they won't cycle back through. Simple as that. If up and the image index is greater than zero, because if it's at zero, this does nothing. And if down and image index is greater than two, I'm sorry, less than two, because if it is two or higher, this does nothing. So let's try something real quick. Just want to make sure this works. Instead of saying two, because your game might have more option menus than just start menu and exit, maybe you have credits in there or some other function that you want a different review and go to or something. Let's try image number minus one. Image number is the maximum number of frames in your sprite, but it counts like image number for something that has three frames would be three but it starts counting at zero, so it's zero, one, two, so we need to subtract one from there. Let's just make sure this works. Yep, that works just fine. So that way, no, it doesn't matter how big it is, it'll still always work. It'll never exceed what the maximum amount of frames should be. And let me just try this on my controller. Perfect. Oh, that's great. Okay, now, how do we get it to do the things? Now we just have to put some conditions in here. Now this requires a little bit of juggling, so this is why this wouldn't work for like any game that has like a ton of menus or anything like that, but for just something really simple like a little shooter or an arcade game, this is perfect. If image index equals two and accept. Game end because the second in, uh, image index is exit. Let's create another room real quick. Room, this one is going to be, actually let's just duplicate the room we had because then we don't have to set the measurements. This is gonna be R underscore game. And then we're gonna start one that is duplicate that our underscore menu. Delete that from our game. Delete that. Now to know that we're in the game room, we're going to change the color to red. And if we're in the menu room, we're going to change the background color to green. No, bad choice. Blue. Okay, so this is just gonna represent a menu, like a, or maybe a credits room or something like that. And then the game is gonna be represented with a red screen. That's just so that we know we're going into a different area. So let's go back into our menu. A menu option, let's say if image index equals zero and accept room go to our game and then we're going to do one more 
if image index is equal to one. I'm sorry, that is supposed to be two equal signs, not one. Because two equal signs is asking a question. It's saying if image index is equal to zero, one equal sign is assigning something. Image index equals zero or something like that. So you always want to make sure you're using two equal signs to ask the question, does it equal that? So if image index is equal to one and except the room, whoops, room, go to our menu. All right. So, and to say, I realized that I put a back function in here, but I have no use for it in this particular situation. So, because this menu option won't be in the other rooms, so you won't need it actually. So let's just go ahead and try this out. All right, so I hit the F key on start. And it took me to the game room. If I go down to menu and hit F, it takes me to the options room. And if I go down to the exit button and hit F, it ends the game. Let's just make sure this works with our 360 controller. Yep, it sure does. So that is how you make a painfully simple menu system for Game Maker Studio. And this would work with any of them, no problem. You just have to remember exactly what your image index is supposed to be. So I remember that zero was start, one was menu, and two was exit. And it's really just as simple as that. Um, yeah, that's it. And if you're making a small game, this is just such a quick and easy way to just get things started. And you don't have to worry about arrays or you know, for loops and all these crazy things and trying to set up a whole menu system or anything like that. It is just a very quick and easy, simple menu. The only thing that's kind of a pain is if you were to say like, oh, well, now I want to add credits. Well, now you have to go in here and you'd have to make the height, you know, much bigger. And then you would need to go through all your things and like, scoot them down and then type in the center and then go back and change all your code and whatnot. Oh no, I made that change and I can't undo it. Oh well. So yeah, it does kind of lock you in, which is not incredibly versatile. It's not ideal. But again, this is just for a simple, fast menu system. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much. Go make some awesome menus for your games. Take care. Bye.